hope you and your family are doing well during this pandemic. Uh, do me a favor. Tell me hello. Tell me where you're tuning in from in the world. We're going to dive in tonight to, to the topic of tonight's show is what should you be doing now? So um, a lot of you are locked into your homes and um, maybe going a little bit stir crazy. So we're going to talk a little bit about what you should be thinking about, what you should be doing. Now, I'd like to also take just a minute to thank all of our ER doctors and nurses and you know front-end healthcare providers who are out there doing an amazing job just trying to help people navigate this thing. So, and if you are a healthcare provider on that front end, say hi, chime in, let us know so that we can send you props and, uh, and give you graceful thanks. So again, thanks to all of those who are out there on the front lines, you know, helping us out with this situation. So let's talk a little bit about what you should be doing as we speak right now. There's a lot of unknowns. So a lot of you, maybe you're sitting at home every day and the news is on and the TV's on and you're searching the internet and you're trying to figure out as much about this as possible. But I would encourage you, um, you know, a lot of you, again, a lot of you are asking the question, how many people are going to get sick? How many people are going to die? You know, you know, when will this end? When will the social distancing end? When will the self quarantine at home be over? Like, when is all of this going to end? And the big answer is, is we don't know, right? Nobody knows at this point. We don't know. We can speculate all we want. Even the experts don't know. But I think it's important that you wrap your mind around this right here, because, you know, a lot of you were told, that the, this whole thing was going to end next week, um, and it's not. Now it's being, you know, kind of prolonged. So I would just say buckle down. There's a lot of unknowns, and, and we just don't know. So driving yourself and your family crazy over this lack of knowledge isn't going to help you. It's actually just going to serve to continue to increase your stress at home, to continue to increase your stress overall in this ordeal. And that's not going to help you maintain your health or your sanity. So Again, the bottom line is the quicker you can wrap your mind around the we don't know component, uh, I think the better off you're going to be. So some of the uh, some of you are also kind of struggling because I know just just in my own office here, you know, we have people who have lost jobs. We have um, people who are struggling with finances. Right. And these are major issues, major stress points. We've got people with kind of the unknown of if when we go back to work, will the job still be there? When we go back to work, will um, I have to start looking for another job because there isn't one? Like all these things are big unknowns. Now we've got this, you know, not to get too political because I, I really, this is not a political show, but we've got the stimulus package that was passed and that's designed, of course, to help people get back on their feet and to stay on their feet as this thing kind of roils and boils over us. But bottom line is we don't know and if you fall in these categories here, the best thing that you can do is, is kind of, well, it's easy for me to stand here and say to let it go, but how many of you know the serenity prayer? So let's just put up that because I think that's probably the best advice that I could give any of you in this time. And that very simply put, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And right now, what you can't control is you can't control who's going to lose jobs, whether the job's going to be available, how long we're going to be on self-quarantine. You can't control how many people are going to be sick, how many people are going to die. You can't control um, the timing or the time frame around this. It's just going to run its course, and that's all you can really do. And, and so in times of high stress, especially if you're a type A personality, and a lot of you are, um, you want to control every aspect of life. It can be really even more challenging for those of you who have that type of personality. And so I recommend that you get uh, you get real serious about a, kind of a deeper understanding about the fact that you don't have control over this situation. There's not a whole lot you're going to be able to do to navigate it. There's not a whole lot that you're going to be able to do to change the outcome of what happens except in your own home, except in your own body. So, you know, the big thing here is, is don't worry about what the rest of the world is doing or how long this is going to take, but worry some more about what you're doing and what you're going to do to help yourself kind of get through this. Because one thing is for sure, once we're through this epidemic, this pandemic, that's, you know, that's just getting warmed up in the U.S. here, um, once we get through it, 
life will be different for many of you. Life will be very, very different for many of you. And so what you need to be thinking about and focusing on right now is, is yourself. How can you improve upon yourself so that you're ready to deal with the aftermath of what may come? Okay. And that's, again, that's the best advice that I can give you. So in your daily life, let's make some room here. In your daily life, there are a few things. I'm going to put up a slide here that I think you should focus on. Now, this is not limited. This list is not limited. Um, but what should you be focused on right now? I think number one, you should be focused on you. And so there's some things that you can focus on. Number one, if you're talking about immune focus, I've spent the last month and a half teaching, you know, what you should be most focused on in terms of, you know, nutrition and your immune system, because the best offense is a good defense. So when your immune system is healthy, it can take care of you. So it reduces your risk. But we talked about sleep a little bit. You should be focusing on sleep. Sleep is critical. Um, without sleep, the immune system begins to falter. There's so much research on the benefit of getting sleep and actually having an improved immune function. In essence, an improved immune memory, an improved immune function. This is one of the reasons why we were last week when we were talking about histamines or antihistamines, many of you during allergy season are taking those medicines. And I said, look, antihistamines disrupt deep REM sleep. And I said, this is one of the reasons why, unless, unless your quality of life is so poor that you should try to forego using antihistamines is because again, they disrupt that sleep. And that sleep is more important right now with all the stress that many of you are under to recover from that stress. So antihistamines will disrupt your ability to get that adequate sleep, but you need to be focused on it. Now, other things you need to be focused on, we've talked about eating real food, right? You need to focus on eating real food. You need to be focusing on sunshine where applicable, where you can get it. Some of you are further north. It's harder to come by. Some of you are in different parts of the world where there's just less of it, but you need to be focused on it to the extent that you can get it. In other words, get as much as you can to the toleration that your skin will not get a sunburn as you're getting it. Fresh air. So again, fresh air, food, sleep. sunshine are all critical factors that you can't ignore. And then we've also got exercise is important right now. Um, one of the good things, a lot of you are on lockdown, but you're not on lockdown potentially from walking outside. Now, some of you may be, but those of you who aren't need to really be focused on this exercise piece in a big way. I'm going to talk a little bit about this one because some of you are in lockdown. So I want to talk about a, a little bit tonight about a principle around exercise that I think anybody can do no matter where you're at. And that is a style of exercise called Tabata. Now, if you haven't heard of this before, then pay attention. Tabata is the name of the scientist who actually, you know, researched exercise to try to determine what was the perfect amount of exercise without overdoing it, but also to be effective without underdoing it. And the real answer came back as about eight minutes a day. And I know that may be new news to some of you, eight minutes a day of exercise. That doesn't hardly seem like it's enough. It is. Um, it's how you go about doing it. So a Tabata is a four minute workout. And you can, with a Tabata, you can pick any particular movement. You don't have to, I mean, there's no magic. There we go. There's no magic to it. So let me give you some examples. So Tabata would be a four minute workout where you can pick any exercise that you want. Push ups, sit ups, squats, lunges, jump ropes, jumping jacks, burpees, um, jumping lunges, um, plank holds, if you've got some dumbbells at home, arm curls, shoulder presses, you name it, fill in the blank, right? It, Tabata is a four minute workout that you pick any activity or any exercise and just put it in. Now, what does this four minute pattern look like? It looks like 20 seconds of, of work, followed by 10 seconds of rest. And you do that times eight. That's eight rounds. So 30 seconds times eight is four minutes, right? So you got 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest. So let's say we pick a Tabata push up, then you do 20 seconds of push ups, nice and slow, nothing too quick. We're not in a big hurry. Tabata's good form, okay? The right form. And, and, and you, you want to make sure too that you don't overdo it. So pick something, you know, if you're using weights, pick something that's relatively light. If you've never done this before with a push up, if you, 
you, if you haven't done a push-up in 10 years, you may not start with a, with a solid push-up on the ground. You might start with a wall push-up where you're pushing against a wall or where you're pushing against a high countertop or something of that nature. But scale the movement to your capacity to do it. But Tabata can be done at home. You can do, you know, Tabata, a four-minute workout. You know, again, 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest. You do that eight rounds and you're done. After four minutes, you're done. Then you rest four minutes. Okay, then you pick one more exercise and repeat. So, you know, if you really want to kind of get balanced about it, you know, you can do this four days a week. You don't even have to do this seven days a week. You can do this four days a week. But when you do it, pick an upper body activity and then pick a lower body activity. So if you're doing two of these Tabatas four times a week, you know, you're working in one aspect, you're working your lower body, another aspect, you're working your upper body. And this is all you really need to keep yourself healthy without a gym. So those of you who can't get to the gym right now, those of you who are landlocked in your home, you know, this Tabata style of activity can be very, very advantageous because number one, it doesn't require a ton of time. Number two, it doesn't require a lot of equipment. Remember, most of the equipment that you'll need for this is really pretty much body weight stuff. Now, if you have some equipment at home, more power to you, you'll have more variety. But again, push-ups, sit-ups, squats, lunges, plank holds, jump rope, jumping jack, burpees. These are all body weight stuff that require virtually no equipment. If you don't have a jump rope, you can jump in place. I mean, so there's really, you don't really need any equipment to do Tabata style workouts and they will work you out. The whole premise of this is again, with this 20 seconds on 10 seconds off, you get to round eight, actually you get to round four, you're going to be panting pretty good and you're going to be tired to a certain extent, but you get to round five and it's going to get harder and harder and harder to five, six, seven, eight. You get to that eighth round and it's going to burn really, really bad. And it's going to, again, that burn is what we're after. That burn means that you're working your body well enough to improve your muscle tone. Remember, we've talked about improving immune function. Uh, we haven't really talked about it in depth with exercise, but muscle mass, muscle tone, is critical for immune function because what happens to a sick person laying in a hospital bed when, they're, when their immune systems don't have the strength to carry on is their immune systems start taking from the muscle, right? So your immune function and your muscle tone go hand in hand. When your immune system needs more help, it will steal your muscle to make antibodies to help you fight. So you want to have you know, plenty of muscle tone in this regard. Now, if you, if you don't at this point, and you know, it's not, it's never too late to start building muscle. It's never too late to start doing this type of exercise. And remember, eight minutes is not so much that it's going to wipe you out and wear you out and make you so tired that you can't function or suppress your immune function because you've worked too hard. And that's why I encourage this style of activity right now for those of you who are stuck at home, especially if you don't have a gym or if you're used to having Kind of fancier equipment now because you're stuck at home if you want to you can just type this in type this in and you can look at different examples of tabata workouts the, using body weight activity to get more ideas if you like but this is the style that i would highly encourage you to implement right now as something that you can do there's never been a better time in your life and there's never been a better excuse for you not to be able to exercise than right now especially if you're on self-quarantine at home hey don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.